السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر سید علی مردان نظمی ویلکم ٹو مائی چینل ان دس لیکچر وی ول سم بیسکس اباؤٹ پولر کوارڈینیٹس اینڈ پولر انٹیگرل اینڈ دین وی ول لرن ہاؤ وی کین ٹرانسفارم کارٹیز ان انٹیگرل انٹو اے پولر انٹیگرل سو فرسٹ آف آل واٹ از اے پولر کوارڈینیٹ سسٹم اے پولر کوارڈینیٹ سسٹم از اے سسٹم وچ از یوز ٹو لوکیٹ اے پوائنٹ ٹو ڈائمنشن پلین اے پوائنٹ ان پولر کوارڈینیٹ از ریپرزینٹیڈ بائی آر این تھیٹا ویئر آر از دا ڈسٹینس آف دا پوائنٹ فرام دا اوریجن اینڈ تھیٹا از اینگل میئرڈ ان کاؤنٹر کلاک وائز ڈائریکشن وتھ پازیٹو ایکس ایکسس Here in this diagram, if P is a point whose coordinates are R and theta, then its distance from the origin will give you the value of R and the angle measured of this point in counterclockwise direction will give you a value of theta. So these are the polar coordinates. Next, these are the transformation equation in order to convert Cartesian coordinates into polar coordinate x is equal to R cos theta and y is equal to R sin theta. For the reverse process, we have R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared and theta is equal to inverse of Y over X. Next, it is a general representation of a polar integral double integral over the region R F of R of theta dA. Now, please remember that the value of dA in Cartesian coordinate system is dx dy or dy dx. But in polar coordinates, we will take dA is equal to R dr d theta and this order is fixed in polar coordinates. So that's why... In this formula, the value of dA is R dr d theta. F of R of theta is a function whose integration has to be done and the limits of R are given as G1 of theta and G2 of theta. Please note that since R is our inner variable, so limits of R may be constant, may be variable. And theta is our outer variable and limits of outer variable is always in the form of constant numbers. Here we will calculate the limits of theta in the form of angles in radian measure in counterclockwise direction with positive x-axis. In the next step, I will explain how we can calculate the limit of R. In order to calculate limit of R, we will pass an arrow through our region. The boundary through which this arrow enters our region will give you the lower limit and the boundary through which this arrow exit will give you the upper limit of R. So here, The lower boundary has the equation R is equal to G1 of theta and the upper boundary has the equation R is equal to G2 of theta. That's why the limits of R here are G1 to G2 of theta. Next, in order to calculate the limits of theta, we will calculate the starting angle and the ending angle of the region in counterclockwise direction. Here, the starting angle is taken as alpha and this ending angle is taken as beta. So the limits of theta are from alpha to beta. Next, we will learn some uh, something about equation of circle. This is a general equation of circle we center at AB and radius R. If we take AB equal to zero, then the center of the circle is at origin. And equation number one reduces as X square plus Y square is equal to R square. Now, e this equation number two represents a circle, a complete circle whose center is at origin and radius R. If we solve this equation, equation number two for X, we have equation number three and equation number four. And if we solve this equation for y, then we have equation number 5 and 6. In the next part, we will learn which part of the circle is represented by these equation number 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, x is equal to minus square root of r squared minus y squared is a semicircle in the left half plane or a semicircle in second and third quadrant. x is equal to square root of r square minus y square is a semicircle in the right half plane or in first and fourth quadrant. y is equal to square root of r square minus x square is a semicircle in the upper half plane or in first and second quadrant. y is equal to minus square root of r square minus x square is a semicircle in the lower half plane or in third and fourth quadrant, a semicircle in third and fourth quadrant. Next, after knowing these basic things, we can solve this question, question number 17 from Thomas Calculus 12th edition book from exercise 15.4. In order to convert this Cartesian integral into a polar integral, we have to sketch the region of integration. The region of integration is sketched with the help of some boundaries and these boundaries are obtained from the limiting values of the variable. Here, The limits of x are minus 1 to 0 and the limits of y are 0 and minus square root of 1 minus x square. x equal to minus 1 is equation of vertical line which passes the point where the value of x is minus 1 along x axis. 
x equal to 0 is equation of y axis, y equal to 0 is equation of x axis, and y is equal to minus square root of 1 minus x square is equation of semicircle in the lower half plane with center at origin and radius 1. Next, drawing these boundaries. This red line is equation for x equal to minus 1. y equal to 0 is equation of x axis. x equal to 0 is equation of y axis. And this purple color is a circle, is a semicircle. y is equal to square root of minus 1 minus x square. We center at origin and radius 1. Now please note that in this diagram, that this portion in the third quadrant is the common region, is the common boundary region of all the four boundaries. So this is our region of integration. So highlighting our region of integration. Now, in the next step, we will calculate limits from this region of integration. In order to calculate limits of R, we will pass an arrow from the origin crossing this region. Whenever your origin is involved in your boundaries, the lower limit of R is zero and Please note that your arrow exits the boundary through this circle, semicircle. Now the distance of each point of the boundary of the circle from the origin, which is actually the center, is equal to radius and which is equal to 1. So the limits of R are 0 to 1. And for limits of theta, we will move in counterclockwise direction. When we move in counterclockwise direction, our region starts at this point where the angle is 180 degree. And our region ends here where the angle is 270 degree. So limits of theta are pi to 3 pi by 2 means 180 to 270 degree. So in order to convert this integral into polar form, I have replaced x square plus y square with r square, dy dx with r dr d theta. For the limits we have calculated or I have discussed earlier. The limits of r are 0 to 1 and limits of theta are pi to 3 pi by 2. Next, making the simplification. I can take 2 outside because it is constant and I can write, rewrite it as r over 1 plus r. Now making the simplification, I can add plus 1 and minus 1 here. Now dividing the first two term with 1 plus r and the second term with 1 plus r, we have 1 minus 1 over 1 plus r. Now, in order to integrate this function, we have to use these formulas. Integration of constant function is variable itself. And if in the integral, we have a fraction and derivative of denominator is available in the numerator, then its integration is natural log of denominator. Now, here you see that 1 is constant. So, its integration is carried out with the help of this formula. And 1 over 1 plus r, have a look on this one, we will apply second formula here because the derivative of 1 plus r with respect to r is 0 plus 1 which is available in the numerator. So making the integration step, integration of 1 is r, integration of 1 over 1 plus r is natural log of 1 plus r for the given limit 0 to 1. In the next step, applying the limits, making the simplification, I have from this bracket 1 minus natural log of 2 and natural log of 1 is 0. So I have 1 minus natural log of 2. In the next step, I have taken 1 minus natural log of 2 outside and integration of d theta is theta for the given limits. Applying the limits, making the simplification, I have my answer as 1 minus natural log of 2 into pi. I hope you have understood this question. Please like, subscribe and share this content with your fellows. Allah Hafiz.